Looking for a way to support the mtggoldfish.com YouTube channel and website? Well, pick up a Scoops Hero of Jank playmat from mtggoldfishmerch.com today. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we are heading to Modern to play a deck that it kind of came to be from two different ends of the spectrum. So this is Rhythm Stompy, and this deck, the inspiration is twofold. First off, a week or two ago, we played Hydra Tribal, four color Hydras in Modern, and while the deck, it's pretty janky, not really designed for Modern in general, but Tribal Modern, one thing that we took away from it is that Colonian Hydra and big, dumb creatures that dodge Lightning Bolt and Fatal Push can actually be pretty powerful in Modern. So I wanted to keep trying and playing with Clonian Hydra, and then Caleb D. posted a list that uh, involved Rhythm of the Wild, some big, dumb creatures, not Clonian Hydra, but uh, the combination of really wanting to see how good Clonian Hydra could be, and this Caleb D. list uh, was kind of the inspiration for Rhythm Stompy. And the idea of the deck, pretty simple. We ramp, we give our creatures haste, we smash face out of nowhere, crush our opponent with some really surprising big stuff that's hard to deal with. So as you can see, uh, around 100 bucks in the paper world, 34 ticks on Magic Online. So a pretty great deal for a really fun, just super smashy unique deck. A quick reminder before we break down Rhythm Stompy for Modern. If you enjoyed this deck, and you enjoy budget magic in general, it would be amazing of you if you could take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Rhythm Stompy, and this deck is pretty easy to break down. So step one, the rhythm in Rhythm Stompy is Rhythm of the Wild, and this is the key card of our deck. So uh, three mana enchantment makes it so our creatures can't be countered, which is kind of nice, but that's not the main reason we're playing it. It is good if if we run into control or whatever. The big deal is it gives our non-token creatures riot, which either means haste or a plus one, plus one counter. Uh, often we're using it for haste. Sometimes we go with a plus one, plus one counter mode, especially nice if you have multiple rhythms, we can give haste and a plus one, plus one counter. So this is a card we're looking for, and we're looking to get it on the battlefield quickly and then just smash some massive hasty creatures at our opponent's face. So uh, apart from Rhythm of the Wild, the next step of the deck is random ramping it on the battlefield, and also ramping into our big things. The power of our deck is in the five and six mana slot. So for this, we have a bunch of options. Arbor Elf, Utopia Sprawl, probably sick of hearing me talk about this. It's just the fastest ramp package in the modern format. Can add a lot of extra mana as soon as turn two if we can Arbor Elf untap the Utopia Sprawl land. Then we also have Llanowar Elves in Sylvan Carry added. So Llanowar Elves just adds a green mana. Sylvan Carry added helps fix our mana. Kind of an expensive, ground-bound, but resilient version of Birds of Paradise. Uh, so these cards, make sure we get to our Rhythm of the Wild. Any one of Utopia Sprawl, Arbor Elf, Land Elves can get Rhythm down on turn number two, and then all these cards help us get to our big payoffs as quickly as possible. So what are we smashing into play, hopefully with haste with Rhythm of the Wild? And this is where the deck gets really fun. So first off, we have Bloodbraid Elf, and this is a card that kind of walks the line between a finisher and an enabler. So it's pretty good on its own. If we have Rhythm of the Wild, it's essentially a 4-3 with haste for four, which is a reasonable amount of damage. Damage, and our deck is just overflowing with hits. Our best hit is Rhythm of the Wild. It's kind of a way we can dig for our Rhythm with Cascade, but just getting another Mana Dork is fine. Our deck has some six mana stuff we really want to play. So like turn four, Bloodbraid Elf, hit a Mana Dork. Turn five, play our six drop after making a land. So that's kind of step one, but our biggest, baddest payoffs are five and six mana. So first off, as I mentioned in the intro, Colonian Hydra, and we were already excited about this card from Four Color Hydras. It was one of the sneaky surprise all-stars. So, uh, essentially a 4-4 four, four for 5, but that 4 power comes in the form of 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and it has Tremple, and whenever it attacks, we double the number of counters on each creature we control. So, when Colonian Hydra attacks, it becomes an 8-8, eight, eight, and then a 16-16, and it's growing anything else. And this card works absurdly well with Rhythm of the Wild. So, 
In our dream scenario, we're going to play like Rhythm on turn two, and then maybe turn four Colonian Hydra. Give Colonian Hydra haste, which means we swing in, immediately double the counters to an 8 8, hit our opponent down to 12, and then the next turn, we swing, double the counters again up to 16, opponent is dead on the spot. Also, remember Rhythm of the Wild. While we're often hasting in creatures, we can't put a counter on our creatures, like our random mana dorks or whatever, and then Colonian Hydra is doubling the counters on all those as well. So that's big payoff number one. Hasty face smashing Colonian Hydras. Then we have the Deuce. Deuce of Calamity, and this one's kind of funny. So Deuce of Calamity, 5 mana 6-6 six, six trample. However, when it deals 6 or more damage to an opponent, we get to blow up a land that player controls. So almost the same as Colonian Hydra, this is a card that's really scary when it comes by surprise. If it's sitting on the battlefield, our opponent's going to plan around it. They're going to chump block it so they don't take the full 6 damage. But when it comes off the top of our deck, or out of our hand with haste, and smashes our opponent when they're not expecting it. Not only are we hitting for six, we're also blowing up one of our opponent's lands, which really puts our opponent behind, kind of spirals out of control. And then, at the very top of our curve, we have Inferno Titan, which is also amazing with Rhythm of the Wild. So Inferno Titan, three damage divided how we choose when it comes into play, also three damage when it attacks. The trick here is, with Rhythm of the Wild, we get to attack right away with Inferno Titan. We play it, three damage, then we attack with it, three more damage. That's six direct damage, either getting rid of blockers, uh, killing creatures, going to our opponent's face, and then we smash in with a 6-6 six, that six. also has fire breathing, and that's basically the deck. Play Rhythm of the Wild as early and often as possible, play a bunch of random mana dorks, and then just smash in uh, ball lightning style with these massive five and six mana plays that do sweet things when they attack and can really swing the advantage bar in our favor super quickly. Otherwise, Burst Lightning gives us a bit of removal, kind of our budget Lightning Bolt. Our deck is at the very top end of the budget. There is some upside. We can ramp a lot, so we often can kick a Burst Lightning and get four damage rather than three. And in the early game, it still takes care of uh, whatever, an Infect Creature, a uh, Dark Confidant, things like that. Two damage takes care of it. So a fine budget substitute for Lightning Bolt. As far as the mana base, pretty simple. Eight dual lands, a bunch of basic lands, weighted towards forests, so we'll be able to have Utopia Sprawls put on them and also Arbor Elf on top them. That's why we got Cinder Glade as well. Kind of a medium dual land, but it is a forest mountain, so it's a red source that Arbor Elf can untap. Sideboard. Burst Lightning, number four, just to deal with aggro creatures, and then a bunch of targeted hate. Ancient Grudge for artifacts, Cinder Glades, artifacts and enchantments, and hates on Storm, and even Control to some extent. If we can just stack these up combined with our hasty damage, gonna be really hard for our opponent to cast spells. Damping Sphere for Storm-style combo decks, Arclight Phoenix-style combo decks, also Tron decks shutting down the land, and then Tormod Script to deal with graveyard decks. And that is... Rhythm Stompy for Bodard, and that's our budget magic deck for this week. So we are going to put Colonial Hydra to the test in a really sweet shell, along with a bunch of other sweet cards, do a Calamity, Inferno Titan, and see how this actually works. Can you just play Rhythm in the Wild, slam massive things that do something sweet when they attack, and win games in Modern? That's what we're going to find out today, all on a budget. So anyway, let's get to the gameplay, see if Colonial Hydra is really as good as we hope. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy it, and I will talk to you soon. All right, budget magic time. We are playing some Rhythm Stompy in Modern, and this is a very green hand. We're not super close to Inferno Tightening, but we got mana, so I guess we keep... I mean, we have turn three Colonial Hydra. No Rhythm of the Wild to haste it, but still, I mean, it's not bad. Hopefully we find red mana at some point. Well, Forest and Llanowar Elves. Opponent. Mold the Six. Untaps. And Temple Garden. Tapped. All right. Well, red mana? Oh, Rhythm. Rhythm, but no. Well, all right. Play Gyre Sage. The lack of red mana, not ideal. Rhythm would have been so good there. Actually, we don't get Colonial Hydra next turn. We're short. We're short one mana. Gyre Sage doesn't actually add a mana equal to its power. We gotta evolve it first. That's where Rhythm comes in. Rootbound Craig for our opponent. Well, alright. There goes Gyre Sage. Come on! 
red mana, red mana, red mana. Eh, that works. Utopia's Brawl on red. Forest. Rhythm of the Wild. We could still use one more... One more red source. Oh, man. Hasty Clonian Hydra is pretty sweet, though. Tap land. Opponent passing. Well, all right. We... Clonian Hydra. <laughs> Our new obsession with haste. Combat. Attack. Double it. Eight. To the face. Game trail tapped. Pass the turn. All right, opponent. And, uh, is Colonian Hydra going to be enough? <laughs> we found the secret. We found the secret stomper for Modern, and it's Colonian Hydra. People just can't deal with it. Still have no idea what our opponent's doing. I mean, this just wins the game next turn. It hits for 16 with Trample. It is pretty sweet with Rhythm of the Wild. And opponent! <laughs> that does it. That does it! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if we change anything, honestly. Let's just run it back. I don't know. Yeah, let's just run it back. I don't know what our opponent's doing, so we're not going to change anything. I mean, that's our plan. Stomp them, stomp them, stomp them. I wonder if Gyrus Age is good enough. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. It's good with rhythm. It's not good without rhythm. I guess we don't have that many ways to evolve it, which is annoying. Maybe I should just... It might just be better as Sylvan Carry added. That might be the right choice. Because Sylvan Carry added also adds extra red mana, and that is one of the pinches for our budget deck. Ooh. Hoo-hoo. Hmm-hmm. Hmm-hmm. All right, we'll keep this. Okay, well, let's see what removal our opponent has. This hand, if our opponent can't kill Arbor Elf, it gets to play a... All right, Birds of Paradise. It gets to play a pretty quick... Clonian Hydra, again. No rhythm, but... Ooh. All right, game trail. Reveal the forest. And yeah, let's let's bolt the birds. That's usually the right call. Bolt the birds. And then next turn, we can Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl. That seems fine. Bonant. I mean, we're working towards our big finishers. Planes. And passes. Ooh, deuce. Uh, so play the land. Play Utopia Sprawl. On red, red, red. Hmm. Let's just go... I guess it doesn't matter, does it? Uh, I guess we go red. Play Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. Well, let's see if our opponent can kill our Arbor Elf. Or if we get to start playing huge things. No Rhythm of the Wild for haste, but... We still just start slamming big things and see what happens. Temple Garden. Tapped. Oh boy. We're gonna get to play something? Okay. Opponent. Passes. Well, tap, untap, tap, and tap, and let's just deuce of calamity. Draw, drop, draw, oh no. Dra dropping a deuce. <sighs> I knew that was a bad joke, even as I was saying it. <laughs> I almost stopped myself, almost. I'm gonna have to write that in my hand. Do not make dropping a deuce jokes. <laughs> Uh, potent. I mean, now our Arbor Elf probably lives, because there's no way our opponent's going to kill Arbor Elf when there's a Deuce of Calamity on the battlefield. And that means Inferno Titan and Bloodbraid Elf, and we're just stomping. Okay, well, maybe there is a way that they kill our Arbor Elf. Although, this means we get to start deucing their lands. So, even that's fine, I believe. That is brutal. That does put our mana way back. Opponent passing, and passes. Uh, well, since our opponent did not blow up our stuff yet, let's do this first. Inferno Titan, boom. Opponent, down to 16. Get in with Deuce. I mean, I assume our opponent has Path. I don't know why else they would... Wow, okay. Uh, all right, blow up your Temple Garden. Wow. Oh, I mean, if this was our opponent's plan, they probably should have done that before we Inferno Titan them. Not much upside to waiting. I mean, bluffing, maybe? I I don't know. Well, we just absolutely stomp through. Well, this is what our deck wants to do. With rhythm, it's insane. And even without rhythm, it's still sweet. And our opponent scoops it up and cannot beat the stomp. And uh, yeah, 
All right, that was that was pretty good. I think I think we are gonna switch to Sylvan Carry at it though. I will say, let's just go for consistency. Our deck has enough power that I don't know that we actually need a Mana Dork that grows. I think like we're probably fine with just having a Hexproof Mana Dork that adds red mana, which seems kind of important. So let's uh let's try it like that. All right, sweet. All right, budget magic time. We are playing some Rhythm Stompy in Modern. And, eh, I mean, we don't have a Rhythm, but we got Ramp. Thraben Inspector. So our opponent, presumably playing like a Death and Taxes style deck. Hopefully that's fine. Uh, let's just game trail, reveal a forest, and Llanowar Elves. So in theory, turn one Llanowar, turn two Sylvan Carry added, turn three... Hmm. Turn three is going to be interesting. We can Blood Braid and try to hit Rhythm for Deuce. And then... <sighs> drop our Deuce. <laughs> why? Why? Why Magic Gods is the card named that way? And why can't I stop <laughs> saying that? Oh, Alright, opponent. <laughs> it just happens naturally. It's not even like I'm trying to make the bad joke. It just... Alliteration. Deuce. It... it, it just happens. Opponent gets in. Down to 19. Yep. <laughs> Shirt. Goes quarter. Uh-huh. And passes. All right. Well, play a forest. Play a Sylvan carry added. Put up some defense. If we get got by ghost quarter, that's fine. We still have mana for blood braid. Uh, yeah, we'll attack. I don't think there's any two mana flash creatures that green white would be playing. Get him. Hit our opponent. I mean, we would prefer to not get hit by Arbiter or Ghost Quarter. If we had a choice, we would choose no. Opponent sags a clue, pays a life, draws a card, untaps. I mean, I guess if uh, if we do get Ghost Quarter Arbitered, pretty much makes up our mind for us that so we're going to be blood breeding. Yeah, opponent's land destruction just not that exciting with all of our mana dorks. Opponent. Eldrazi Displacer. Okay. And passes. Well, I guess we're blood braiding then. Yup. Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. Alright. Well, I mean, in that case, I guess we just Colonian Hydra? This puts our opponent in a position where if they don't have a removal spell, they're going to have to keep leaving up their mana for this Displacer. Because the hits from Colonian Hydra are painful. That's a lot of damage. In this case, Hydra is better than Deuce, because Deuce, to really be effective, we need to get in for 6 damage, which a little hard with a Thraben Inspector out. Opponent can just chump. But this is going to force our opponent to start spending mana to like flicker our stuff, unless they have Path. I guess they could potentially take 1 hit, Although, we have a lot of follow-ups. We have double Blood Ray Deuce Calamity. Opponent. And our opponent's spending a lot of life. Two mana. Flicker Wisp. Sure. So that's kind of a removal -y combo. It does mean our opponent's not flickering this turn, though. <laughs> okay. Sure. I mean, this doesn't really do anything, but that's fine. I guess it lets them attack right now. If they're gonna go race mode. Opponent. All right, going race mode hits us. Sure. Down to 15. Well, we get back our Hydra. Untap. Forest. I'll play the land. Let's just Blood Braid. Cascade. Hit a Rhythm. Well, that'll be sweet for next turn. Um, plus one, plus one counter. Go to combat. Attack, attack, attack. Yeah, let's attack with everything. Double up. Opponent. Eight. 13, that's, opponent has to chump. Wow, that's so much damage. So much damage out of nowhere. Wow. Opponent went from looking pretty stable to having to chump block just to stay alive. I mean, I guess they can trade with an elf and go to one, but then they lose all their horizon. Can Opponent's just done. They just can't beat it. Whoa. Uh, this deck has some power, and Colonian Hydra is... Oh, it is sweet. It is sweet. So opponent's playing death and taxes. I guess we just bring in a burst lightning. Uh, we might have to go down. Hmm. 
Probably Utopia's Brawl. Our opponent's got a million, a million ways to blow up lands. So Enchantment Land Ramp doesn't seem great. Otherwise, we don't have much. Our sideboard is geared towards beating the unfair decks. So we're mostly just hoping to, well, do what we did that game, which is just kind of smash our opponent with Clonian Hydra. Boy, why have we never played Clonian Hydra before? <laughs> that card is busted. And it's so sweet with Rhythm of the Wild. Like, that last turn was so sweet. We hit the Rhythm, it resolves. We put a counter on Bloodbraid Elf. And then it doubles with Hydra so they can't block with their Flicker Wisp. And we just win out of nowhere. Just like, surprise, you're dead. Oh, this deck is, this deck is pretty spicy. <laughs> oh, man. Collodion Hydra. How do you beat it? I mean, our opponent does have paths, so it's not like there's no answers, but it is a pretty uniquely situated creature where it's too big for some removal, too expensive for some removal, and incredibly scary with Rhythm of the Wild, just smashing for eight out of nowhere. Same with most of our deck, like Inferno Titan with Rhythm's insane, Dews with Rhythm insane, all of our stuff with Rhythm of the Wild, outside of our mana production, is just very good. Uh, okay. I mean, we'll keep this. We got lots of Arbor Elves, and we're working towards big things. A little less explosive with one less Utopia Sprawl, but we'll, we'll try it. Inferno Titan seems really insane against our opponent's deck. That's probably our best card in this matchup. But I mean, ramp, ramp, finisher, finisher, finisher. All we're missing is a rhythm to really go crazy, and our opponent's mulliganing. Okay, well, sorry, Death and Taxes. <laughs> we are stomping ya. I mean, well, you can win with five cards. It's not over by any stretch. Opponent, land, go. Burst lightning. Well, forest, arbor elf, pass the turn. Opponent, ghost quarter, and arbiter. Well, we can't let that live. Opponent, passing. Hmm. Well, play Cinderglade. Untap Cinderglade. Burst lightning, arbiter. We could try to wait and be greedy, but... We don't want to play into random shenanigans. It's safest just to kill it. Well, and now we're a land away from our five drops. In worst case, we start playing Blood Braids, which is also fine and probably hits mana or rhythm. Opponent passes. Well, let's see what we draw. Inferno Titan. Well, tap, untap, tap, untap. Add red, Blood Braid into. Eh, all right, that's fine. At least Land of War gives us the mana we need to. Uh, yeah, we can't attack because this has pro red. At least that gives us a mana to cast five drops next turn if nothing goes wrong. Opponent. Passing. <laughs> I mean, this is what we were talking about when we played the Hydra deck a couple of weeks ago was... Oh, lordy. All right. Tap. Untap. Tap. Tap, tap. Tap. Untap. Tap. Inferno Titan. <laughs> this is what we were talking about right when we played the Hydra deck was basically... Modern decks can be soft to just playing big, dumb creatures. And this deck is showing off that softness, bone it. All right, paths, sure. We will take a mountain. I mean, we got another one and a deuce and a hydra. We would love rhythm. Rhythm is still like our best draw. Opponent, arbiter, sure. Opponent, passes, carry added, hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, tap, untap, tap, untap, and Inferno Titan, part two. <laughs> uh, Arbiter and phase. Opponent can sack Forge Tender if they want, but then, all right, they just let it go. Well, pass the turn. It's not like our opponent can really afford to Ghost Quarter us anyway, because they don't have the mana. Opponent, combat, passes. Ugh. Well, this draw hasn't worked out for our opponent, but we smash him and get oh, rhythm. Yes, play it. Carry added. Put a counter on it. Eh, attack with Inferno Titan. Hit our opponent for three. They do get to block. I guess we probably should have swung with Blood Braid too, because they could only block one. But our opponent, yeah, gets a free block with Forge Tender. Next turn, life gets even worse for our opponent though, because we have Hasty Cloney and Hydra. Opponent. Oh, still not hitting the land. Okay. Passes. Yup. We draw. Okay, paths. Yeah, that's fine. We will grab a forest. Play the mountain. Yeah, I mean, here it comes. Colonian Hydra. Haste. Go to combat. Swing with 
And let's swing with everything. We have so much mana. Let's just get in the damage. <laughs> Our Zilvic Ariadne added growing. Boy, do I love Clody and Hydra. This card is so good. Opponent. Yeah. Blocks as much as I can. Takes a lot. And I don't know what gets our opponent out of this with three mana. It's not like they can even Wrath. Tech Edge. Yeah. And we have just absolutely stomped Death and Taxes. And all right. Clony and Hydra. <laughs> Proving itself to be pretty sweet in the right deck. Oh, lordy. All right. Uh, we'll take it. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. Budget magic time. We are playing some Rhythm Stompy in Modern. And oh boy, Affinity, eh? Well, let's see if we can stomp Affinity. Blood Braid. Uh, let's see. So, Game Trail, Reveal Forest, Lana War. Go. Well, we get to spin into Blood Braids. I think this matchup is mostly going to be about. Uh, especially before sideboarding, about hitting an Inferno Titan. That's our sweeper, so to speak. Blink Moth. This looks like traditional affinity. Fires a Blink Moth. Opponent. Combat. Gets in for two. Well, this is slightly less scary than what I was worried about. Opponent. Passes. Memnite. All right. We draw another game trail. Well, Forest. Utopia Sprawl. On red. Pass the turn. Ugh, come on, Inferno Titan. We are taking a beating from these dorks. I guess any removal spell is nice. Dark Steel Citadel. <sighs> Cranial plating. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah. Well, the beating is increasing. Opponent gets in. Hits us. Four, six. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we're going to block. Drop to 14. Opponent passes. Forest. Well, game trail. Reveal forest. We are kind of slightly flooding. Bloodbraid Elf. Into. Arbor Elf. We put two Colonian Hydras, one Inferno Titan to the bottom. Ooh. All right. Well, Arbor Elf isn't bad. It does mean if we draw Inferno Titan, we get to cast it. But we are under a lot of pressure here. Pressure that is going to kill us very quickly. Hit our opponent. Down to 17. Citadel. Grows the... Yup. So we're taking... Jeez, we're taking a huge hit. I actually don't know if... If Inferno Titan saves us here. Because we're taking 10. We could kill Signal Pest. Yeah, I think we're just dead. Thankfully, we have a ton of Cinder Vines in our sideboard. Which does kill Artifacts. Down to 4. Opponent passes. Well, alright. Um, yeah, we are just literally dead. So we will, we will just concede and go to sideboarding. There's, uh, no reason to show our opponent even more of our deck. So we get four Cinder Vines, Burst Lightning, two Ancient Grudge. So we actually have a, quite a few sideboard cards for this matchup. The tricky part's gonna be what do we cut to make room for these cards? Inferno Titan, great. Colonian Hydra is kind of middling. Or Colonian Hydra is good. Uh, Deuce is a little middling. Let's go down two Deuces, a couple of Rhythm of the Wilds, a couple of Lana Wars, and yeah, let's go down one more. Yeah, go down one more Deuce. Ugh. Yeah, let's try it like that. We're a little light on the top end, but I think that's fine. We get to play first. Well, okay. This is not a dream draw, but we have carry added into Cinder Vines into Colonian Hydra. And say, opponent, can you beat this? Nexus, Vault Scourge. Well, play a forest, play carry added. Pass the turn. Still would love to draw Inferno Titan. I think that's still our single best draw. Citadel, Opal, Cranial Plating. Yeah, all right. So we're taking five, our opponent's gaining five. Boo. Yeah, Ancient Grudge would also be insane. Utopia Sprawl. Well, play a forest, play cinder vines, play utopia sprawl on red, play lana war, blow up cranial plating, pass the turn. Well, come on, Inferno Titan. Inferno Titan is what we want, what we need. That was a good turn, though. We made a bunch of mana, killed the cranial plating. Opponent. Ravager. Yup. Sacks grows. 
plays another opal. Ink Moth. Number... Ugh, that's gonna kill us by surprise. Ink Moth. Yeah, we're pretty close to getting combo killed by Ink Moth here. Opponent. Attacks, attacks. Yup. Come on, Ancient Grudge. Carry added. I'll play a Forest. Play Colonian Hydra. I think we're in trouble, though, with this Ravager out. Did not draw enough sideboard cards. Pass the turn. And we didn't hit an Inferno Titan in either game, unfortunately. Oh, it's so good against these little creature decks. And we have the mana. Ugh. And a Galvanic Blast. Yeah, this is... This is not lining up the way we want. Hmm. We have a lot of cards that feel good in this matchup, but they haven't shown up enough, and our opponent's draws... Eh, they've been solid affinity draws. Cranial Plating doing its thing. Opponent, are we literally dead here? Or just mostly dead here? That's a question. Really now? Really? Huh. Well, opponent is, uh... Drawing those Cranial Platings. Ink Moth... We might have one more turn, but that one more turn, I think it has to be literally exactly Ancient Grudge, or we're dead. None of our other spells do it. Opponent. Attacks, attacks, and we take a bunch, we draw, not literally exactly Ancient Grudge. Yeah, and we're just dead in the air. Well... That was a rough one. All right, budget magic time. We are rhythm stumping in modern, and this is a keepable one lander. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I tend to think that one landers are more keepable than most, but one land Utopia Sprawl Double Sylvan Carry added is actually a pretty good one lander. I mean, there are ways it goes wrong, like Ghost Quarter. Oh boy, Thought Seize also. Thankfully, that's not happening. Well, Forest and Utopia's Brawl on red. Yup. And pass the turn. Opponent untaps. And we still would like to hit a land. If we hit a land, then we get to Blood Braid on three. Blood Crypt tapped. Opponent passing. Yeah, that's a land. So play carry added. Play a forest. Pass the turn. And now we get to spin the wheel on Blood Braids to try to hit Rhythm. And then we can rhythm out Hydras and uh, Inferno Titans, and that closes out the game pretty quick. Mountain for our opponent. Opponent, passing. We draw, who? all right, uh, Utopia Sprawl on, yeah, we'll stick with red. Bloodbraid Elf, spin the wheel. Rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. Ah, oh, rhythm would be so sweet. Well, all right, boom. <laughs> First lightning your face. That's actually not a great hit. Putting one on the bottom. Just a land. All right. Eh, that's fine. I mean, it's not a hit, but we can live with it. That's actually the worst the worst hit in our deck. Kills our Blood Braid. Sure. Opponent passes. Untaps. Blood Crypt. Ooh, untapped. <laughs> okay. Uh, That was not a card I was expecting. It's like a... Arclight Phoenix, but you gotta always pay four for it. <laughs> I mean, it does have some upsides. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone cast Ferrari the Cursed. Alright, untap. Arbor Elf. Well, play... Actually, I think we start with... Blood Braid. Spin the wheel. Carry at it. And then play Arbor Elf. Get in with Blood Braid. We're not hitting our... Hmm... We're not hitting our rhythms, that's for sure. Opponent, land. But we have enough mana we can just start casting stuff, which is fine. Mirari, getting in. Yeah, opponents. Stain aggro. Passes. Well, all right. Tap, untap. Sorry, opponent. Things are going to get a smidge worse. Inferno Titan. Three and one. And then carry added. And then attack with Blood Braid, and it looks like Mirari the Curse, not quite enough to overcome the stomp. <laughs> and opponent, let's see it. They could have Damnation. Damnation is a legit draw here. Some sort of sweeper. All right, kills Inferno Titan. So opponent, this keeps him alive for a turn. Although our hand is full of big stompy things. Forest. One, two, three. Well, go to combat. Attack with Blood Braid. Hit our opponent. Tap, untap. Tap. 
Inferno Titan. Hit our opponent. Yeah, all right. I mean, if they have Damnation, they have Damnation. We're going to run it out for fun. For funsies. This is not the not the correct play because we don't know what our opponent's doing. There's some small chance they have Damnation and we have Lethal either way, but I really love Cloney and Hydra. <laughs> all right. And maybe it scared our opponent into submission. Maybe they would have kept playing if it wasn't for that. Well, we don't really have any idea what our opponent's doing. I think we'll just go up one Burst Lightning go down one Lana War Elves and run it like that? I guess that's it. I mean, until we see more than Morari the Cursed, it's hard to sideboard too much. All right, on to game number two, and ooh, all right. Well, I mean, sure. We actually have a rhythm. Our mana is very tapid, but that's fine. Smoldering Marsh for our opponent. Uh, game Trail, Reveal Cinder Glade, playing Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. Mountain for our opponent and passes. Well, hmm. Play an Arbor Elf. Play a Cinder Glade. Pass the turn. Oh, we really just want to get this rhythm down before our opponent has discard. Opponent. Tuk Duke. Uh, okay. I think we will choose to not kill Tuk Duke. Our opponent's got some spice. These are cards that I have not really seen in modern much. Down to 19. <gasps> That's Colonian Hydra. Oh, Lord. All right, uh, untap, play Rhythm of the Wild, play Cinder Glade, and, uh, all right, pass the turn. Not gonna do anything. Just gonna pass, leave up our Burst Lightning, and next turn, we get to start smashing, hopefully. Opponent tapping out here would be pretty sweet. Opponent, combat, two tukes in four, one. Two tukes pretty bad until it dies. Then it gets a little better. Opponent passes. We draw Burst Lightning. Hmm, I'm worried about removal. I think we go on the surprise plan. I think we game trail tapped, go to combat, pass the turn. We're just going to pass. We really just want our opponent to tap out, and then we can smash them by surprise for a ton of damage. If they don't tap out, then eh, we'll probably just have to go for it. Maybe we'll draw something worse that we can cast. Opponent. Ugh. Racto, say. Eh? Huh. And we can't actually kill that at the moment. Well, all right. We draw a forest. So play the forest. I guess we just... Oh, this is not good. Maybe we have to kill Rakdos. This feels so bad. I think we do. Ugh, all right. Burst Lightning Rakdos. Untap. Kill Rakdos. Go to combat. Get in with Arbor Elf. Well, that didn't feel good, but we did what we had to do. What is going on with our opponent's deck? This is a lot of cards that I have never seen anyone cast in Modern. Rakdos is big, and potentially we just let our opponent dump their hand. All right, Mirari, that's more like it. Opponent, I think we can win the race. Hits us. Well, let's Utopia Sprawl. We can't cast both, can we? That would be too insane. Utopia Sprawl on green one two three four five six seven eight nine we can't so tap untap tap play deuce with haste go to combat attack attack blow up um shizu i guess pass the turn opponent has a land do they have removal that's a big question opponent zergo all right the legends keep coming. Opponent, combat. Gets it. Sure. Down to 10. And passes. Ooh, Bloodbraid. I like Bloodbraid. So let's play Bloodbraid. Cascade. Into Llanowar. Put a counter on it. Put a counter on it. Untap. Tap, untap. Tap, tap. Colonian Hydra. Oh, is Hydra going to take it down? With haste, go to combat, opponent. Come on, do we have it? Do we have it? They need removal. If they don't have removal, they're done. Oh my goodness. All right, attack. Double the counters. Okay, opponent. Thinking. They need a removal spell. Blocks. And, oh, they have it. <laughs> All right, Rakdos Charm hits us to four. And we just stomp over and... Hydra does it again? Hydra is so insane. Well, 
we will uh we'll take it stop him over stop him down this deck is sweet this seems like an actual pretty sweet powerful budget deck uh yeah not bad not bad at all all right budget magic time we are mulliganing with rhythm stompy okay okay we're at six we're gonna keep the one lander it is risky but not absurdly risky yeah we're gonna try it i mean we have two one mana mana producers do we want three i think we go bottom i think we'd rather just draw a literal actual land uh let's forest and arbor elf arbor elf's a higher upside play if we draw utopia sprawl for example bone it well i mean we got a plan it is hopefully to get to these hydras bone it mountain Ugh. all right no bolting our birds land burst lightning well all right tap on tap tap play sylvan carry added pass the turn and yeah, we're doing it the hard way mountain oh blood moon us do it oh boy huh well that is what you call blowout well lana wargo yeah that's that is not good not even a little good mountain rabble master gets a goblin goes attacking Ugh. we draw Ugh. arbor elf Ugh. we just we're not gonna hit this land Ugh. i would have kept this again there's not that many decks that are actually playing anger of the gods in their main deck so it's an easy keep but it doesn't look like it's gonna work out we need to draw utopia sprawl or a untapped red source this turn opponent if this is chalice then we're done i think because then we can't burst lightning this rabble master chalice on one wow the comedy of errors yeah all right by the time we yeah well that was that was a disaster well we got got we got 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 hmm well the good news is we don't really care about blood moon the bad news is we got absolutely wrecked in game one so burst lightning in cinder vines in go down one rhythm one deuce lana war lana war carry at it i guess try it like that pony has uh, some good cards that was a risky hand though so all right we get to play first and well okay we'll keep it opponent starts with the gemstone caverns exiles something legion war boss we'll play a forest and utopia sprawl on red pass the turn mountain for our opponent passes um yeah let's sylvan carry added cinder glade pass the turn opponent mountain and passes all right play rhythm of the wild cinder glade pass the turn well if nothing goes wrong next turn we get to start stomping scavenger grounds sure opponent chandra that's actually pretty fine i mean we just get to clony and hydra the chandra and that is that's a big swing and then after the hydras in 8 8 i don't know how our opponent deals with it mana and chalice ballista well that's fine we still get to smash chandra so add some mana our favorite friend clony and hydra <laughs> so good with rhythm give a haste go to combat smack chandra double it up <laughs> as a mono red prison player i do not want to see an 8-8 i mean our opponent's answer is ensnaring bridge our opponent's problem is we have cinder vines in hand so ensnaring bridge doesn't actually stop us even if they draw it and that's basically the only way our opponent's deck can deal with what's happening locking ballista sure we'll take it opponent passes oh lord burst lightning well we will blood braid elf flip into utopia sprawl on red blood braid elf with a counter go to combat attack is this game yes yeah, is that is 20 all right that adds up to 20 actually 21 <laughs> this deck's hilarious 
<laughs> oh, I love this deck. This deck is just so much fun to play. It is really, really fun to play. Hmm, is Cinder Vines better than Ancient Grudge? The incidental damage is nice. I guess maybe we keep the rhythm and go down one more deuce? Yeah, let's keep Cinder Vines. Cinder Vines does just grind our opponent out of the game if they're on the, on the like, slow prisony plan. It's gonna add up and make it hard for our opponent to cast spells. It seems relevant. Well, that was, that is what our deck does. When our deck is doing its thing, it is so spectacular. All right, so we are on the draw and, okay. I guess we keep this. Opponent starts on a gemstone cavern. All right, forest and arbor elf. Pass the turn. We are a bit land heavy. We're hoping we draw into, okay, desperate ritual and snaring bridge. Well, we have answers for that eventually. Eh, we have answers for that right now. So let's just play a mountain, cinder vines, and pass the turn. Leave up the ability to blow up bridge if we need to. Ramen on Bruins. Going to abrade our Arbor Elf. Well, untap our forest. Arbor Elf down. And yeah, I guess we just untap. Game trail, untapped. Pass the turn. Well, we need some big stuff or Rhythm of the Wilds. Land for our opponent. Legion War Boss. Well, we will just kill that. Uh, do we take down the bridge? Yeah, I think we do. Kill and snaring bridge. This lets us attack with blood braid. More lands. Apply a game trail. Reveal the land. Blood braid. Into. You know, Arbor elf. Oh, do we put a bunch of good stuff on the bottom? Eh, mostly lands. Holy lands. All right. Well, hit our opponent. Well, come on, big finishers. That's what we need. Big finishers, cinder vines. Opponent. Gemtone Caverns, part two. <laughs> All right, Simeon Spear Guide, that's fine. Oh, come on, something big. Something big. Ooh. Opponent. Eidolon. Uh, that is also fine. Opponent passes. Burst Lightning. A play Cinder Glade. Do we attack? I think we do not attack here. Oh, we need any of our big finishers. Opponent. Combat. Passes. All right, well, play Cinder Vines. Take two. Play Cinder Glade. Pass the turn. No attacks. So we can kill this Eidolon if we ever want to. I'm not actually sure that killing it's correct yet. We're going to hit big stuff eventually. Opponent. Passes. Hmm. Play a forest. Pass the turn. Kind of flooding out. Opponent. No attacks. Well, all right. Cinder Vines. Pass the turn. Well, it's going to get painful for our opponent to cast a lot of their stuff. Opponent. We love a Blood Braid. Any of our five or six mana cards, especially Inferno Titan. All right. That is one of them. Colonian Hydra. Pass the turn. And now our opponent needs an answer. Or <laughs> Colonian Hydra does its thing. Since it doesn't have haste, Chandra does get it. Opponent. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's kill your Simeon Spirit Guide. Not going to block with Hydra and get a Braided. Opponent. Over? Done? Four mana. All right, opponent has a Chandra. So this does allow our opponent to remain alive temporarily. Chandra gets to kill Colonian Hydra. Yup. All right. Well, that's sad. That's less sad. Inferno Titan. One and two. Go to combat. Get him with Arbor Elf. And opponent, they're done. They're done. They can't beat it. And this deck just stomps people. This deck is just stomping all over everyone. Colonian Hydra, we had an inkling when we played that silly four color Hydra deck from Much Brew. We had an inkling that Colonian Hydra might actually be pretty insane and modern. And then uh, Rhythm of the Wild seems like the way to take advantage of it. And we're just stomping, stomping them, stomping everyone. Uh, impressive, impressive.
Sway, sway, sway. So why don't we learn this week about Rhythm Stompy for Modern, and the deck was pretty sweet. So we played five matches, we won four of them, we lost to Affinity, we beat a Naya deck that we just kind of stomped before they did anything, Death Attacks is a kind of strange, spicy Rakdos Legends deck, Mono Red Prison or Free Win Red, so we kind of just smashed through a lot of decks in the format, and it proved what we were thinking, and then that is, Clonian Hydra is a little bit underrated in a legitimately scary creature, especially in a deck like this, where we could be casting it as early as turn three with haste, and that is just a lot of damage coming through. In this deck, it is perfect for Rhythm of the Wild. We've seen some just like value -y Rhythm of the Wild decks where you're just kind of like, eh, it's fine, it hates on counters, it grows my stuff, but this deck really goes in on the power of Rhythm of the Wild, and Inferno Titan, Deuce of Calamity, Claudia and Hydra, these creatures are so insane, and we had just some absurd games, some games where our opponent's close to 20 life, and we just, like, whatever, Bloodbraid Elf, flip a Rhythm of the Wild, and then play Colony and Hydra, and just 20 our opponent out of the blue, or 15 our opponent out of the blue, so the deck has a lot of power, and it ran really, really well. So, the only downside is, the deck is slightly one-dimensional, we don't really have any card advantage, so I think sooner or later, we're gonna run into some uh, ramp deck problems, uh, where we just draw all of our mana dorks, and we don't draw any finishers, or draw all of our finishers and no mana dorks, so that is a concern, in non-budget builds, there are some ways to get around that, like Tireless Tracker gives you card advantage, you could look to play Planeswalkers potentially, like you could even play like Domri or Chandra or something, and you could definitely change up the sideboard quite a bit in a non-budget build, but really for being a budget deck and playing some options that are slightly less than perfect, like Llanowar Elves probably would be better as a Birds of Paradise for example, little things around the edges like that, the mana base being a little bit clunky with the game trail not untapping with Arbor Elf, but still, even with those limitations, we just absolutely stomped people. Colonian Hydra was great, our ramp plan was great, Rhythm of the Wild was insane, so all around, the deck was a blast. It was super fun to play, and I'm mostly just super happy to see how insane Clodian Hydra was, just because we could see the glimmer of it when we played that four-color Hydra deck. We are like, yeah, this deck, it's not great, but Clonian Hydra, that card has something going on, and it falls in a sweet spot, and this deck just does such a great job of embracing the power of Clodian Hydra that it was really cool to actually see it work and pay off. So, it's a deck that seems fairly competitive, even in budget form. You can make some, like, mid grade upgrades where you just kind of tune up the mana base and get rid of some of the clunk without spending a ton of money, and then you can upgrade it fully and have, like, Tritospheres and land destruction if you want to, Blood Moons, and be a little bit hateful, especially out of the sideboard, and have a deck that's even better. So, all around, the deck is sweet. It's fun if you like smashing with huge hasty things and catching people by surprise, because no one expects just an 8-8 Colonian Hydra smashing them out of nowhere, or Inferno Titan for six damage with double triggers or Deuce of Calamity blowing up land, so the deck catches people by surprise. It's powerful, it's fun, and apparently at least somewhat competitive, although we did play a few janky-ish matchups, but still, we played some real matchups too, and our deck, it kind of just dominated. So, anyway, that's been our budget magic for this week. <laughs> Rhythm Stompy for Modern. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.